Hi, I wanted to share this short video with you because I learned a new tool that you can add to your calculus toolbox, if you will. Um, you've probably noticed throughout the semester that a lot of times these integrals, actually especially here in chapter 15, a lot of these integrals require using integration by parts and sometimes actually having to perform it more than once. Now this can get kind of messy and can be very time consuming. So yesterday I was in the lab and uh, Eli showed me a way to perform integration by parts. It's kind of like a shortcut for when you have to do it more than once. And he actually said he got it off Wikipedia. So I wanted to share that with you. Hopefully it will help with your homework. Um, so I have up here written on the screen that um, it's good to use when you need to perform integration by parts more than once. I already mentioned that. But it's also good when one of the two functions is in the product is a polynomial or some, like x raised to a power. So, and this type of method of integration is called tabular integration by parts. So if we consider an example like the integral of x to the third times cosine x. I will hope that you all agree with me that this is a case or an instance where we would have to use integration by parts. But how many times would we have to perform integration by parts? If you'll recall, we usually let u be the part in the product that will get simpler when we take derivatives, which definitely won't be cosine. When you take the derivative of cosine repeatedly, it just alternates back and forth between cosine and sine, cosine, sine, etc. However, when you take the derivative of x to the third, it gets simpler and simpler until it disappears, which is why integration by parts works. If you take the derivative of x to the third, it turns into x squared, and then it goes to x, and then it disappears. So, if I am performing integration by parts on this example, I would want to let u be the x to the third part, which would leave what's left as the dv. The dv would have to be the cosine x dx. And I'm sure you've noticed when you're doing integration by parts that there's definitely a, a pattern to it. I mean, it's it always goes uv minus v du, but then it repeats that pattern as you keep doing it over and over again. And that's and that's how tabular integration works. It works off that pattern. And so here's the method. You start, you make a little column here, which should be pretty obvious since it's called tabular integration by parts, but you make a you make a table and in the first column you find the derivatives of u. derivatives of u, and in the second column we find the repeated integrals of v. Or dv, excuse me. Okay, so we start out here just by putting x to the third in the first spot and cosine x in the second spot. And we actually, I'm going to show you a slightly different way than Wikipedia shows it. Wikipedia, um, when we finish making this column or this uh, table, um, your final answer is taken by taking products at diagonals but so we have so so in our case so we just take products straight across the table I'm actually going to rewrite the x to the third one more time before I take the derivative and then so the way this works is you start out again letting u be the top of the first column dv be the top of the second column and then the left column we repeatedly take the derivative after we rewrite it once 
So I take x to the third, I rewrite it, then I take its derivative, which of course is 3x squared. Then I take its derivative again, which is 6x. Then I take its derivative again, which is 6. Okay? Then on the other side, the second column, I, I keep taking the integrals. So cosine x, the integral of that is sine x. The integral of that is negative cosine x. The integral of that is negative sine x. And finally the integral of that is cosine x. Alright, so then the table now actually includes my answer. And the answer is just the products of each of these rows added together where the first term is positive, the second one is negative, positive, negative. The first term will always be positive and we just alternate like this. So when I go to write my answer, this is equal to the first row which is x to the third sine x. First term is positive, second term is negative, so we go minus that next product, which is 3x squared times minus cosine x. Next term is positive. We take the product here, which is 6x minus sine x times minus sine x. And then we got the very last term, which is going to be 6 times cosine x. And then we just uh, change the signs. Or we clean it up a little bit. I mean, like the second term, I have a negative times a negative, so that's going to be a positive. So my final answer will look like x to the third sine x. plus 3x squared cosine x minus 6x sine x minus 6 cosine x. And then, of course, one thing I did leave off, since I don't have any limits on this integral, we do have to add a constant. Now, in your examples in this class, we aren't really going to be having constants because we always have limits on our integrals because we're finding things like volumes or centers of mass, etc. So I hope this helps um, and is very useful for you in the homework. And in the future, if you ever encounter having to do integration by parts multiple times. Um, so that's all I had for you. Thanks.